Hello and welcome to yet another episode, Ty Sharman Etherin, Wheel of Time Podcast. I'm Sam. I'm Will. We're back again discussing Crown of Swords. We're slogging away and uh, we're having a good time doing it, I'd say. Yeah. You know, it's good good stuff. For so, sure. This is a Will episode. Will's going to take the <laughs> helm of this one and uh, I will be the peanut gallery. So, <laughs> <laughs> color, color commentary. There you go. So we're starting off in chapter 17, The Triumph of Logic, uh, which I rated a skip. It's a nice chapter title, though. Yes, it is. Odd chapter title choice, though, because it's such a it refers to such a small portion of the chapter. <laughs> Logic often, does not generally triumph. <laughs> yeah, um, as is often the case. Matt returns to the wandering woman, his head still spinning from his encounter with Tylen. Uh, he comes back to find Vannon and Harnan chilling out and looking all sorts of ways. The I don't know. There's descriptions there. <laughs> there's um, too many sometimes. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of funny. You know, they're minor characters and it it really just makes it slow down when it stops to like really describe a minor Let's check character. In with these guys and see what they're doing. I always liked Vannon, you know, the gap between his teeth so you'd spit between and how he was like a really good horse thief. But yeah, Vernon, I just have no mental any kind of feeling for at all. Well, you, you've got a better picture of either of them than I do. If you I, I hadn't really formed a, a solid picture of Vannon, but if you want to get a solid picture, you can read this chapter because it, it gives you one. <laughs> When Matt gets to his room, he's attacked by two men who seem to attempt to kidnap him. Uh, but Matt easily kills the two of them with a firm assist from his luck. There's a funny moment when Matt turns around after the fight and Naram is just standing there immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lord shirt has been yes, exactly. blood on it. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, already complaining. Yeah. So some other stuff happens, or to be more accurate, a whole bunch of nothing happens. Like that's really that that attack moment is kind of like the only like big thing that happens in this chapter. Closest we get to a sudden dark friend attack. It's right. more like a sudden dark friend nuisance bumped into in the hallway or something. Yeah. Doesn't quite uh, have the same ring to it, but carry right. on. It goes on it, and it happens really quickly. Mistress Anan, the owner of the end and her husband show up and they don't really have any idea who these guys were or why they tried to kidnap Matt. Well, then why are we talking about it anyway? Like there's that little, I don't know, is it later where he talks about how Nibudar, the woman is the head of the inn and man is a fisherman or whatever. I think they do this or that a little bit here and mm -hmm. she punches her husband or son. I don't know. I don't remember if that was that this, this point or later. It may have been here. Yeah. Uh, no, they... Important. I did enjoy. We're like, I always enjoy like when a male character makes a joke and his wife hits him very hard. <laughs> it <laughs> happens multiple times to multiple different couples i mean i'm thinking of bashir it happened and then anyway right that's always fun matt realizes that he's had a note slipped in his pocket uh, that is a warning to Nynaeve and elaine to be careful if they want to avoid being sent back to the tower he figures it must have been jolene jolene or teslin <laughs> um who uh slipped in the note we swapped to Jolene's POV and she and Tesla. Yep. Are, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's check in on, on uh, Jolene. All right. Um, that's real, real something we were all dying to do. Yeah. We've all, I know you've all been wondering what's been going on with Jolene this whole time. So I'm glad we're, uh, we're swapping in. So they're talking about some stuff that doesn't matter much. And yeah, that uh, sums it up pretty well. Yeah. Teslin thinks they should grab the Supergirls and Matt and bring them back to the tower. But they're also both angry with Elida for sending them to Ebu Dar because it was kind of a, nothing ever happens in Ebu Dar. <laughs> right. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, so they decide to cool their heels until Elida tells them otherwise. So yet another check in where the sum result is, hey, you want to do something? And it's like, nah. nah, thanks for that, RJ. That was fantastic. Yeah, I will say, though, I give give him a little props here only because there are so many times in stories where you wonder why a, a, some character chooses not to intervene. Like, hey, what were they doing during this time? <laughs> and here, at least we have that. Like, we, yeah, here's why they talked about it. They debated it, decided not to. Exactly. But the issue here is I just have trouble caring about Tessa yeah. and Jolene. Right. If, it was, if it was like some Forsaken or something like, you know, there's several times there's been a boss fight and it's like, well, what were the other Forsaken doing during that? You think they would right. have like been a good chance for them to like get in 
a bum hit and just, you know, shoot some bail fire at Rand's back. Right. Of course, they're not, you know, they're not omnipotent, I guess. They don't always know what's going on, but do you think they would maybe occasionally but right well and as we get further into the series too there uh, there are so many different characters like these kind of tertiary characters the bit player villains that are just you know like yeah and not necessary evil just sort of unpleasant right yeah <laughs> just like little bothersome mm-hmm. we have so many characters at this point that mm-hmm. it starts to feel like do we really want to check in with these people yeah, you but- know, this stephen king had this problem in the stand and he, he writes about this in his on writing memoir and mm-hmm. he like he had real major writer's block he couldn't figure out Maybe I've told the story already. I don't know. He couldn't figure out what to do. So he just put a bomb in both of their, like in the closets of both groups of people and killed most of his characters. And (laughs) (laughs) I just keep thinking RJ just needed to drop a Terangrial bomb. Yeah. So in like the White Tower, I don't know, just kill off some of these folks and just, you know, it'll be okay. Just lean into the grim dark just a little more. A little more. Maybe, maybe. (laughs) So speaking of characters that we don't care about, next we swap to Phalian Boda. Now, who is Phalian Boda, you may ask? I don't remember, and I just read this. Well, (laughs) she's she's a member of the Black Aja, who's joined by Ispan, another member. Oh, oh, I I was reading it as Phalane. It's a different character than Phalane. Oh, my Um, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. They're torturing someone, trying to find out a cache of Turangrial, which Phalian is beginning to doubt even exists. They're still following orders from Mogedian, but they're both starting to question whether she has abandoned them as they haven't heard from her in a while. Yeah, these Black Aja are just a dime a dozen at this point. Like, they're right. just, you know, they're like force wielding, so to speak, dark yeah. friends to just have no, you yeah. know, they're just, they're yeah. just, we don't need a name. Really. <laughs> and so, you know, Phalian begins to think that they should go capture Nynaeve and Elaine and uh, bring them to Mogedian. And this is blah, 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 blah. So well said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we swap to Noel Shireen's perspective. I don't know if we've we've had if Noel has been named yet, though. So I'm not sure if it's a little bit of a spoiler for me to say that's who it is. I, it's, I, it's not a spoiler. There's a character named Noel. We've met him already. It just He was just an old man. Yeah. And he's a new character in this book. He's one that easily gets lost in the shuffle. And I really want to point him out because if you're like me, he doesn't really seem all that memorable. And later we learn more about him and he becomes a much more interesting character. So I want to give a moment and introduce him. We actually first met him back in chapter 14 where he just like showed up for a second. Mm-hmm. He's an older guy who's seen much of the world and has lots of interesting stories to tell. In this scene, he talks about seeing two eyes to die, staying at a goldsmith's house and mentioned that there was something he needed to remember. Uh, There's not much here. It's not that interesting. Again, this is all why I'm like still this is still a skip. Honestly, on this reread, this was the most interesting part of this chapter to me. I totally miss it. 100 percent miss it. I just just Googled it and now I know why. I mean, that that, if you Google it, it's a spoiler. But uh, now I'm like, oh, okay, I got you. But I totally miss that. Like forgot yeah. and so yeah i'm sure any first time reader is like what <laughs> yeah that's why i want to point him out is yeah, like yeah. hey sure sure th- just notice this guy mm-hmm. I, and and if you're the kind of person that you hear that and you're like you're spoiling i'm not spoiling anything for no, you no no we're saying I'm, just, I'm saying don't google it <laughs> yes just notice this guy. That's all I'm saying, because I the first time read through, I didn't even pay attention to him until like way later. And I was like, man, it would have been so much richer if I had been. You get introduced to so many characters from this point in the series on. Yeah, that that's, that's true. And, and you so don't know. And, th- and there are plenty of them like whoever that dude was that Gawain choked out. We never hear from him again. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like it was kind of funny. My, my throat, my Lord, or whatever he said. And he never came back again. No yeah. one could have killed him and thrown him in a ditch and we wouldn't have known. Right. <laughs> What's the difference? There's, yeah. There, I mean, there's so many named characters in this that it's like, hey, we're trying to offer you a little help if you're reading through. And it's like, this is an important character. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. Yeah. So, no, anyway. I think you're fully within your rights to do that. So chapter 18, as the plow breaks the earth, I, I call this a skim. Basically, I'm saying skip the first half, read the last half. And the first part's a little slow. Rand's meeting with the Aiel clan chief and he's ordering around uh, Marana Aes Sedai character number 376 mm-hmm. uh, to illustrate that he is indeed not an Aes Sedai puppet. 
They discuss what to do about the remaining Shido, which are camped at Kinslayer's Dagger, um, which is a small mountain range that shoots off the spine of the world and not, as I thought, a Celtic rock tribute album by the Slayer cover band. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like I said, this part is slow and you could skim it. You could skip it. Right. I it make is sure the second half of this chapter that is actually right. good. It, like this builds up to it and it's like all the mundane details leading up to right. it. It's kind of make... Like, I was just kind of like, oh, I'm ready for this chapter to be done. And then the and second then, half comes like, oh, wait a minute. Now I'm excited again. Now right. I'm excited. And, 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 again, and I must say, only because I'm a second time reader. Exactly. Or like at first time, I'm like, oh, another new character. Who cares? But right. again, we're going to be here to say this is one to pay attention right. to. So anyway, continue. So, so Barrelane bursts in and is very upset about <laughs> Rand trying to send her back um, to Mayen after a failed attempt on her life. Barrelane proving here that she is more than a pretty face. She wants to be in the fight and she's willing to argue with Rand. So Luce th- Theron <laughs> starts humming again. And when he sees Barrelane, who also has her Aes Sedai advisor Anura with her. I, I think um, in the show, they're just going to pretty much have to just have Barrelane in lingerie all the time. Right. Based yeah. on the way the Jordan writes her. I don't care as as long as whoever plays her, they uh, dub her over with Michael Kramer's right. Barrelane voice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's important. <laughs> um, or, or even Michael Kramer's Rand voice. I, that'd be right. fine. <laughs> <laughs> Any, just Michael Kramer. Michael yeah. Kramer, Michael Kramer to... needs to be in the television program is what we're saying here. Actually, yeah. If, yeah. <laughs> both Michael Kramer and Kate Redding need yeah, to. Yeah, I don't care who they are. They could be. He could be Noel. Who we just yeah. discussed. That'd be fine. Yeah, actually, I would, I'd be for that. <laughs> yeah. Again, th- there's nothing too special about this part, but um, that I just mentioned. But here it comes. <clears throat> After they argue a little more than uh, halfway through this otherwise very dull chapter, mm-hmm. in walks Cad Swain, Cad Swain. Yay! Yay! An interesting character. It seems like yes, yet another Aes Sedai name, but no. Right. Yeah, and and I wrote here in my notes. It's another case where you could really miss an important character's mm-hmm. introduction yep. if you're just cruising through these kinds of. Yeah, I mean, tracks. especially this seems like. Wait, have we? Is this somebody we've seen before? Like somewhere right. else? Uh, I don't know. Right. Nope. Have not. She just showed yeah. up. Yeah, Cad Swain is a legend among Aes Sedai. She's the oldest Aes Sedai still living, and uh, she's been out of the tower for so long that she's many been, thought like, she sort was... of retired. Like right. You know, and yeah. Thought she died. Exactly. So according to the Wheel of Time companion, before the Supergirls stepped on the scene, Cad Swain had been the most powerful Aes Sedai in the Third Age. Uh Aha. Okay, I can buy that. Here she just walks in out of nowhere. Like, she, I mean, really just walks into the room. She's like, like, everybody's talking, and she just walks in and just, eh, you can all and, shut up now. <laughs> Go get me tea. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the, the, the two Aes Sedai that are in there, uh, Marana and Anora, are immediately like, no, uh, don't kill him. <laughs> <laughs> she has a reputation of and, dealing yeah. with male channelers. <laughs> it's, it's this, like, halfway between freaking out and fangirling. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Um, Rambo walks in like, oh, my goodness, it's Rambo. Please don't murder everybody. Immediately, all the Aiel veil like they're like, oh, crap, something's going down. She is co- totally not at all impressed. She remains calm. She mm-hmm. looks around the room at the Aiel and the Ashaman. Rand kind of instructs everybody to like, OK, chill out. Let's let's not just attack the random person that just walked into the room. Right. Barrelane is then like, hey, I'm a peace out. Um, <laughs> I think we're done here. So and and she's like, oh, and if you want me to go back to me and that's cool. Like she's like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like whatever I got to do to get out of this room right now. Yeah, um, so this is awkward. So I'm going to leave. <laughs> and uh, Cad Swain asks for tea. Rand pours her some using the power, which is kind of a, a power move. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's like, hey, look at me. I'm I'm a guy I'm who a can man channel. A good channel. What are you getting right. about it? And she is totally cool with that. She doesn't react at all. The other two Aes Sedai seem a little put off by this. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, sure. And then when he hands her the tea, she says, that's a good boy. (laughs) Which (laughs) enrages him. (laughs) Is Yeah, is such a baller move. Like, Uh in a lot of ways, that's a perfect introduction to Cat Swain. Like, at first, when I was rereading this chapter, I was like, this is really kind of anticlimactic considering how big a deal Cat Swain is. But then I was like, no... That's this this classic is her, like, Tatooine, yeah. yeah. And like on a first read through, like reading the scene, it's like, oh, she's awful. I don't like her at all. Or, I mean, I guess there's 
you know, maybe another perspective, someone who immediately loves her. I, as someone who really was like in Rand's corner, it's like, man, he's dealt with enough of this kind of thing. Like, no, let's not. But right. I ended up loving the character. I won't go into oh, yeah. detail as to why. Obviously, we don't want to spoil anything. Right. There's any like anyway. Yeah. But in the long run, in the like yeah. kind of grand analysis, definitely think she's an awesome character. And so, yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, and I, I while we're on this, I want to mention here that my dream casting for Cad Swain is Helen Mirren. Ah, that'd be great. Oh, man. Like that's and that's who I picture whenever in this whole scene. Like, couldn't you see her? That's yeah. a good boy. Like all of yeah. that. Yeah, um, great. Cad Swain throws Rand off his balance by just casually asking if he started hearing voices. And he's like, oh, uh, no, 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 <laughs> oh, no way. Don't know what you're talking about. Heard any voices? <laughs> right. Yep. Instead of being like, yeah, I'm crazier than a sack of badgers. Please he gets... help me. I need help. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm hearing the dead guy's voice. Please help me. <laughs> He he uh, he does what every sane person does when being accused of being insane, and he yells for everyone to get out, <laughs> get the heck out of my room. And and then reinforcing that he's totally sane, he shouts in an empty room alone for a while. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does that. Yeah, yeah. Then this woman named Adrian Tarson shows up, and if you're like, oh yeah, and Adrian. we're back to not caring again. Yeah, <laughs> she, <laughs> she she was in charge of the school that Rand started, uh-huh. and apparently she gives him some bad news but we don't find out what that is quite yet Uh so then we're on to chapter 19 diamonds and stars i put this one as a skim this is a good chapter because we get to know cad swain who is as we said a fun character we get lots of details that slow things down we're in marana's head uh for this and as she follows cad swain with nura they meet up with karuna and bera for cad swain to give them a a good talking to Um, we find out more about who cad swain is her reputation as kind of a maverick who's uh, to instead of climbing the uh the ladder of power in tarvalon she went her own way so she asks a lot of questions and they catch her up the most interesting things that ha- happens here is cad Swain asks why they haven't returned to the lawfully raised Amerlin in the White Tower. Really? Uh, we don't really work with her. We're... Right. Well, they didn't they don't really say anything at first. And so she just goes, so you have a little backbone <laughs> making it clear. It's really she she was kind of stuff. she's just like testing them. Right. Yeah. Trying to find out whose side they were on Mm -hmm. without showing her hand. And so it's Mm -hmm. anyway, it just makes it clear. Cad Swain is not pro Elida. We can kind of safely assume like, okay, she's all right. So we swap to men who is on her way to tell Rand that Colavere had hung herself, you know, so that's cheery. And when she walks into the room to see him, he's been tearing it apart in the wake of hearing that Herod fell has been torn apart. Right. Um, That was the bad news we missed. Yeah, probably by a shadow spawn if you've forgotten about Herod fell because he wasn't a didn't have a huge part he he was the absent-minded professor at the school that ran it open i think i ran on the wiki and this i'm not going to give it away but there's a particular shadow spawn that appears at the end of this book for the first time that there's the speculation is that said shadow spawn is the one who killed yeah i think i think if you yeah read the scene at the end of the previous book in the in the epilogue it kind of yeah it makes clear as a reread mm-hmm. that that indeed is the case so mm-hmm. being employed as an assassin of sorts Rand's sad because the dude he often talked history and philosophy with is dead and men is upset because she found colavere dead and they're both upset so anyway of course you know they start kissing and then we fade to black mm-hmm. so that's you know finally the point at which they're actually a couple finally mm-hmm. and not just uh, men toying with Rand. Right. Um, that is true. Yep. For the last few moments in this chapter, we're actually in Cad Swain's head. She's leaving the Sun Palace. She thinks about how stupid Elida is. Yes. And how <laughs> Rand will be uh, a great challenge. Also, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which she's like, that'll be fun since she hasn't found a task to be impossible since that one time 270 years ago. Oh, OK. Yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just adds to how fun her character is that she's just like, It'll be nice to have a challenge. I haven't had a challenge in a few centuries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Chapter 20, Patterns Within Patterns. Look, it's almost a skip. Okay, it's a skip. Well, but okay, it's a skip. Well, it's a skim. <laughs> and, I, you know, I did the same mental like gymnastics with every chapter. Like, is there a good reason to read this at all? Is there a reason to skim or just maybe not? So fair enough. 
obviously you'll make up your own mind but if you just if if you want to skip it here's the summary you know as a general rule i've been thinking about this if you if you're slogging through and you think oh this never ends go ahead and skip that chapter yeah. I guarantee you it will be okay. Like you won't you won't skip the wrong chapter nine times out of ten. And like I'd rather you skipped even an important chapter and continued than just giving up on the series. Like I've seen right. people do. Like if they get to like the end of book eight or book nine, like I just gave up. It was too it was too bad. Like, okay, we yeah. understand it was a slog. But just right. if you just could have continued just a little bit longer, another yeah. book or two would have been okay. Yeah. Part of the reason why I go to skip with this one is because it is a Savannah centric chapter. Yeah, fair enough. But it, it kind of has some interesting info in it in spite of that. Savannah's with the Shido Wise ones. They're asking each other how they can uh, occupy a few minutes of the reader's time without really advancing the plot or developing oh, yeah. any interesting characters, you know. They're pretty good at that. Yeah. And uh, they have something called a uh, call box that Savannah demands one of the channelers activate. Apparently the call box has surprisingly good reception um, as as a guy uh, whom they know as Kadar answers Savannah's call. Uh, Let's meet in 10 days at that one place, she says. And Kadar is like, why not meet now? And a gateway opens up and he and a woman called Maze. I don't (laughs) care. Um, who is pretending to be under his control. Savannah is was supposed to have brought Rand to Kadar, and he was going to give them a way to control Rand, which actually we've run across before in the yeah. uh, series. Yeah. Since they don't have Rand, he's like, I'm not going to give it to you. I'll keep it for myself. <laughs> right. I will say this actually proves me wrong about something I, I said during the last book. Savannah actually did have a plan to control Rand. It yeah. was vague and dependent on a guy who's super shady, yeah. Um, yeah. but she did have a plan. Now, how she was going to get him to that guy after capturing him. You know what it reminds me of? The Cylons from Battlestar Galactica. They have yeah. a plan. Did you ever watch the the, the remake in the early? Yeah. You know, you're like, yeah. They, they always started out the Cylons. Hey, I have a plan. Like, but do they really? Because it gets kind of convoluted a couple of times, and I don't really know that they have a good plan. They keep changing it. Savannah uh, asks Kadar for him to show them how he traveled, and he says he'll give them some traveling boxes Mm -hmm. for a price. We swap to a perspective of a mystery character. Um, Okay, I'm going to pause right here and say, at at the end of this episode... I would like to explain who this mystery character is. Have, have a spoiler section and, and go through this. But, whole, it's not super clear here. I mean, but but the reason why I'm bringing this up now is because I, I actually think you would benefit from knowing, but I don't want the spoiler sensitive folks to be upset with me mentioning this too early on. So. Anyway, this is this mystery character. Uh, we know it's a Forsaken because he talks about wielding the true power. Right, right. And there's only um, one of those who actually does wield the true power that I right, know. Right. And so is this the first time we've actually heard about that? I, I think earlier. Uh, it's in this- the first time we've seen proof of it, maybe. Like, right. I think they've referenced it. And they're always like, only if you do that, you're going to go crazy, you know? And right. Like it's yeah. crazy powerful, but you're going to lose your mind. And but no, so no one actually does it, even if they could. Right. So the true power is the dark one and one's power. And only those he permits to channel it can use it. And you see the saw across your eyes, which is like anytime you stand up too fast and you get the little dots in your eyes. I always just imagine <laughs> it's the dark one. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so this new perspective, the this character is watching the people we just met called Kadar and Mailevija. And... Um, <laughs> If, and if you're like, ugh, more new characters. Well, the good news is not they're actually, actually not a new character. <laughs> <laughs> not new characters. They're forsaken. We've already met. Turns they out. Just changed their names. Yep. Samuel and Grandal. Samuel um, made himself taller. Right. Isn't that uh, what we would all do if we were absolutely an make give ourselves big muscles, make yourself tall if you're a guy. Um, uh, right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Samuel says he's totally got a truth with Luce Theron and he's going to be made nameless and going to be the Dark One's chief agent. And he's got a girlfriend in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> she goes to another school. <laughs> and <laughs> so um, Grandall asks why Samuel is toying with the Shido. 
And I've got the same question, actually. Yeah, yeah. What, what is your plan exactly? To sow chaos? And yes, and he's yes, like, and yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, small cre- increases in chaos are good, so. I think that Samael thinks he's a lot smarter than he is. I, I really do think, like, he, he's just running around doing random like, stuff. Like, he thinks he's being all subtle and, like, mischievous, or not mischievous, but, like, conniving, and he's just not. Like, he's just not. He's doing stuff that doesn't matter. You know, right. Rand knows exactly where he is and has a plan, you know, to get him. And like, dude, you just you, you yeah. have an inflated opinion of yourself. I, th- I think you're right. But yeah, at the end of this, the watcher, as the narration calls him, uh-uh. channels the true power well, and rips the a hole. Point? What's the point of calling him the watcher at this point and not just saying I, who he is? I don't really. Right. Think I don't I don't understand why. That's why I say soft spoilers yeah because this like it, it you know we know who this character is by the it, within a chapter or two even not long maybe within five or ten i don't know it's not very long i want to talk a little bit about and explain him a little bit more because to yeah. me it's very unclear yeah. in this oh in yeah this especially book. for a first time reader like okay another person who is this <laughs> yeah anyway he channels true power and rips a hole in the pattern and steps outside of it you know right. like you do great okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> sure Chapter 21, Swovan Night. I rated this a read. Oh, wow. Um, I praise for the slog. Yeah. Randomly, a group of beggars attack Matt. Um, oh, yeah. Which, this is a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. Which he just takes as a mugging and he manages to get away. Uh, there are fireworks in the sky in honor of some holiday called Swovan Night. He goes I back to his festival or something in Ibu. Right. He goes back to his room at the Wandering Woman, and after uh, jumping into a dance, um, Kara, K- Kiera, wh- anyway, whoever she is, angrily tells Matt that there is a gilded woman in his room, and uh, the dice are thundering in his head when he opens the door to see Birgitta. Yeah. Um, yeah. Suddenly seeing her clearly, he um, has this clear recollection of the day he blew the horn of Valir. Remembering his own memories. He recalls all the heroes that came back to fight uh, the Shan Chan, including Birgitta, who stands before him now. After he asks how she could be here in front of him in the flesh, and she explains briefly that she was ripped from the pattern. She also explains that her memories of her former life are fading. Mm -hmm. Um, Then Birgitta says that Matt clearly has a few secrets since they've been having this whole conversation entirely in the old tongue. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, dang it. You tricked me into speaking Portuguese or Latin or (laughs) old English, whatever Um, (laughs) equivalent. And uh, she even says he speaks with the accent of a true lord of Manetherin. Like, oh, so well, that makes it so much better. Right. Uh, after a moment, they decide to continue their discussion over drinks. Mm-hmm. We swap to Nynaeve's perspective. Um, this is where things kind of start getting fun. Um, she's wondering how Birgitta's conversation with Matt is going. Her weather sense is telling her that a storm is coming. Yeah, and I need you've been saying that literally right. since book one. Yeah, this is this is definitely one of those like fantasy cliches. The storm yeah. is coming, but right, not right. but not a storm. A storm the the, the different kind. Right, and it's like and it's like with her weather sense, it's like all right, which one is it though? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's if it's a weather sense, then how are you sensing the last battle? Like, it seems mm-hmm. like that anyway. Right, right. Spider sense. Yep. So she, Elaine, Avienda, Julian and Tom are hanging out. That's when Elaine begins to act strange. <laughs> she's yep. she's being all cheery suddenly and starts to dance around the room. And uh, it's she like, did, e. you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, yeah. uh, she begins to use the power to randomly change her and Nynaeve's appearance which uh, upsets Nynaeve because this gives away to Tom and Julian how they've been leaving the palace without mm, being seen. Right. Uh, that's when Birgitta appears, and she is very drunk. Uh, yes. Yeah. So we learn that part of her water bond uh, side effects means that not only do they feel each other's emotions, but those emotions actually amplify and and 
like affect the other person emotionally. So I yeah. wonder if this is different from the like typical water bond in, in terms it, of like getting drunk. It definitely is because they even say that, that that's not okay, supposed to okay, happen. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And Elaine is like, well, maybe it's because it's uh, two women in the bond and that's why it's, it's kind of amplifies emotions rather than just telling right. you. Right. And so anyway, the result when Birgitta gets drunk, Elaine starts acting drunk. Mm -hmm. And um, so Birgitta reports that Matt requires an apology for their treatment of him after he rescued them at the Stone of Tear. And wasn't that <laughs> like a not, year ago? He is not going to let that go. <laughs> let it go, dude. <laughs> He's like, y'all have been real mean to me and I helped you out. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, anyway, after Birgitta explains things from Matt's perspective, um, Avienda takes Matt's side, actually, and agrees that they have toe have to toe. Matt. Got some toe. And Elaine begrudgingly says she'll apologize. Fine. But Nynaeve, of course, will do no such thing. Right. Um, right. So chapter 22, small sacrifices. So we're staying with the Supergirls, but we're now in Elaine's brain. Uh, they go to the wandering woman and both apologize to Matt, mm -hmm. who is clearly recovering from a hangover. He's like, kind of, why are you here? Leave me alone. <laughs> right. It's kind of a funny moment because he's like, oh, like that. Yeah, I just I don't know. And you, you can you can tell like he said it when he was drunk. Like, yeah, I'm, was, not gonna, right. I'm not going to I'm not going to talk to them to tell they, get, they apologize for the way that they treated me. And then they, they show up and they're like, we're so sorry. He's like, oh, oh, yeah. I did say that. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> um, uh, Elaine has to give Nynaeve a flick with Sidar to get her to cooperate. So, you know, Matt just kind of shrugs it off. He's like, oh, yeah, that? No, it's, I mean, uh, yeah, it's not a big deal. Just leave, please. <laughs> yeah, and um, they make you some promises. You have Advil. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, they make some promises to Matt, including that they won't leave the palace without bodyguards if he agrees to help them. Then she explains that they're looking for something called the Bull of the Winds. By the way, somewhere in here, it's mentioned that Avienda and Birgitta are off spying on Jacob Card and mm -hmm. just FYI. Yeah, like this um, happens several times. You're like, oh, yeah, they're off watching Carradine. And like this is like multiple times people are watching Carradine's house. And it's like, OK, fine. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Why does that always have to be a detail that's included? I guess fine. I guess it's just in, to tell us where somebody is. They ask Matt to move into the palace and he mutters something about the dice stopping. And so he agrees and moans when he finds out that Thailand has a room picked out for him oh, just no. down the hall from hers. <laughs> um, I'm sure that'll go well. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Once the Supergirls head out, Nynaeve complains that Matt will be trouble um, when they're met by Mistress Anon, who thinks that they're just a bunch of floozies. Just a bunch visiting. of trollops. Yep. <laughs> visiting Not to Matt. be confused with trollops. <laughs> And there'll be nothing but trouble for him. So um, what's more is she believes they are just pretending to be Aes Sedai. <laughs> and right. there is absolutely nothing they can do to convince her. Mm -hmm. uh, She's like, come she, with me. <laughs> right. But she explains that she knows of some women in town who can channel, who take runaways from the tower. You know, Lane's ready to just be like, go away. And, and then he's like, no, just, 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 you know, yeah, here, hold, hold, wait, wait, hold on, see what hold happens on. here. Yes, we would be interested in have meeting these women and they could help us in all this. Elaine's like, Nynaeve! <laughs> yes. Well, while the reader can infer that Nynaeve thinks these women will know where the Bowl of the Winds is. Right. Um, Elaine cannot make such a connection, clearly. Right. Several chapters. <laughs> right. And so I, I did, I don't think I said, I did, I read that one at a read-ish. Um, yeah, sure. It's closer to a read than a skim. Mm -hmm. Um Chapter 23, I would rate similarly. Um, yeah. It's it's a readish next door to a weaver. So Mistress Anon takes Elaine and Nynaeve, whose perspective we're in, to the house that is, you guessed it, next door to a weaver. <laughs> um, right. Bullying them along the way, which Nynaeve is uncharacteristically cool about. Yep. Uh, yep. Because indeed, she does believe that they will find the Bull of the Winds if they find the group of women who can channel that she's talking about. So they meet Rihanna Corley. Um, Wait, so I'm going to have to just say, I disagree. I think this is a read. I really okay. like the Ken or Rihanna Corley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I, so I get, and, and I guess as a second time reader, it's just more cool to me that this character is showing up 
as a yeah. first time reader, maybe it's like, oh, somebody else just like catch sure. up. So yeah, no, I I, that, I said read ish. Um, <laughs> I, I don't skip it for sure. You know, is, is right, right, right. That's not what I'm. Yeah, uh, that, that's not what I'm saying. The only reason why I I said read ish is because you do get there's a third of the chapter that I would skip at the front. That's like Mr. Sanon walking around and saying hello to people mm-hmm. and all this sure, stuff. Sure, sure. And so like up to that point, yeah, I I'd say you can skim that, but yes, definitely from here on out, you want to read this. Right. Um, for sure. So R- Rihanna is unhappy with Mr. Sanon for bringing the girls to her, but she proceeds to question Supergirls. Uh, she also seems very convinced that there is no way these women could be Aes Sedai. Um, Elaine is indignant over their treatment, and uh, Nynaeve is trying to seem compliant in hopes that they'll soon be led to the Bull of the Winds. Uh, Rihanna says that they have a small group of women whom, who used to be in the tower. A few of them uh, are around the room, and mm-hmm. they'd be glad to help out. Um, maybe help them find a place for them to work, 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 work. Um, <laughs> it's a Rihanna, Rihanna joke. Anyway, there you go. Uh, couldn't get out of the chapter without talking about Rihanna. Should, um, yeah. mm-hmm. Anyway, finally, Elaine can't take it anymore, and she puts her great serpent ring back on her finger. But this doesn't convince anyone. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, where did you get that made? <laughs> and it, uh, it turns out, that one of the women has for her capital T talent is is shielding. So um, even Elaine though she's even... not very strong, right? She's got like makes like a bubble that you can't break. It just goes to show that the uh, the great serpent ring. It's not like a Green Lantern ring. Like anybody, right. could, you could go to like you know Shane Company's equivalent in the Wheel of Time and get a wheel of get a, a great serpent ring. You know, it's like sorry, yeah. this is not this is not convince anybody of anything. No, exactly. If you've forgotten, Elaine is tied with Egwene for being the second most powerful female Aes Sedai after right. Nynaeve. Right. And so she should be able to break a shield held by just one woman, particularly a weak woman. Mm-hmm. But obviously, this lady does have a special ability to mm-hmm. um, hold someone. So these women still think they're just stupid tower runaways. And right. after a fashion, they kind of technically are. Um, if yeah, you, sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, like Elida would definitely say yes to that. <laughs> right. The the girls beg for information on the Bull of the Winds, but Rihanna tells them that if they won't accept their help, uh, then the Supergirls better get out of town because she hears there are Aes Sedai staying in the palace and ooh, she's going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing that uh, these are two of those Aes Sedai mm-hmm. um, who are staying in the palace. They just don't believe them. So. Right. As a second time reader, I'm like, oh, the Rihanna Corley and right. the whole thing is starting. Yay. And I like yeah. it. Yeah, no, I, I I like Rihanna Corley. I want to be clear. I mm-hmm. like I like the kin. I, mm-hmm. I don't think they're a waste. I think some people would say like, oh, they need to be cut they're out. Part and... of this log. Nope, I disagree. I no, think yeah, they're I, an interesting I, an interesting side plot that really I'm, adds to like kind of the context and the I don't know just the. I I 100 percent agree. I I don't dislike them at all as uh, at all. And actually, you know, I will say this is a read chapter just so you make sure you get it. But (laughs) my I'm just saying the first little bit of it is a little slow, a little bit slow. I agree. And nothing, nothing actually other than introducing Rihanna and a few other folks, you don't get much plot wise. But I do. I, I do like the kids. So anyway, they head out. (laughs) Um, Right. And. That's that. So I said I, was, I had a, a soft spoiler at the end of this. So I, I don't I don't want to tell you to go away if you want just a little detail that is, I think, going to be helpful. So first of all, as Sam said, in a few chapters, it's pretty clear that the watcher is Moradin. Yeah. Now, now, who, who more than is <laughs> right is absolutely a spoiler. I guess I don't know. It's I don't, I don't know, know how clear it is. Yeah. That's okay. That's the thing that I yeah. feel like I'm. I'm gonna say. We, I'm, have we already I'm, said spoiler warning? Okay, I'll say it. Hard spoiler warning. Yeah, now we should. We should. Okay, yeah. okay, <laughs> okay. To me, it's not. Though. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I can see where you're coming from. I can't. It's, 
I, I, I mean, it's just because I, I looked this up while I was watching, because I was like, who the heck is this? Like, right, this, right. It's, it's like confusing. You're introducing a, what seems like a pretty major bad guy. And mm-hmm. like, it's just, it's Morden. It's just Morden. Yeah, it's just Morden. Hey, Morden. Okay. Nice to meet you. <laughs> right. So, okay. And, and yeah. Mogedian has the same reaction. She's like, don't you know who I am? Right. He's like, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, later on we, we meet Morden and yeah, he's a Shamael. All right. Yeah, so, yeah. He came back. He didn't get bail fired so he can come back and instead he didn't get put in a woman's bar body or anything like that. He's just in a different dude's body and he's Morden now. <laughs> right. That's it. I really, I actually would be okay with it if they got rid of that element of things because yeah. to, to me, it's just confusing. Me too. It is. It's like, all right. Well, I mean, Ishmael is such a huge bad guy in the in the right. early books. Just bring him back, and it's like, oh, he's back. Oh, you know that. Right. I, you know exactly. I, I don't. I think changing the actor is a mistake, unless the first actor is just you know not great. Like you know, have, right. have, have happened sometimes. I don't know. It could be yeah. an opportunity, but yeah. My only request is that. He's by Elzaman for the first three books. Yeah. And, you know, I'll mention again, I mentioned it back when we went through uh, the Dragon Reborn, but that when Rand finally defeats him and he turns back into a regular looking dude, you can have whatever actor playing him as by Elzaman, but I, I feel like it would be a hilarious thing if like randomly it was Billy Zane. But that's just, that's just, I'm not really serious when I say that. Or you but, could do uh, like like a weird Empire Strikes Back thing, or it's Yosha's face. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I mean, yeah, it's the artist formerly known as Ishmael, formerly known as Beelzebub, now now more than like, yes. Come on, guy. I mean, like, just change his eye color. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's. It's this thing that RJ does that I'm not. I don't quite understand. Where yeah. I feel like it actually hurts our connection to the forsaken yeah and and makes us like on my first read through i really didn't care all that much about the forsaken because right, right. i i was having trouble like who's who and what's what and i you know i wasn't catching that osengar and arangar are you know whatever balthamel blah yeah whatever, no i you know. always had trouble with it too i always liked them just i don't know i like the concept of this like group of like super powerful bad guys <laughs> sure who were, like I, I, from the past and have all this history that history I, with Rand and his past life it's fun Fun, but i'm with you it is like confusing like who are all these people like and especially especially after they start coming back right that's no, when it is like oh. i wanted to like them and it wasn't that i didn't like them it's just that i had a trouble keeping up with who was who what was going on yeah and so and i for my friends that are reading through it for the first time right now so far all of them feel that way they're like i don't really i don't i'm not really interested in the forsaken because it's just like i don't know they I, they're I don't I'm not clear on who's who and what the difference between them is now after having read through it and you get like this idea that there are all these uh, they they all have their different personalities. They have their weaknesses. They have the things that they're kind of like, hey, this is my thing that I'm into Mm -hmm. and all that. Then they become much more interesting to read through, to read back through, because then you you know where they're all headed and, and what kind of stuff is going to happen with them and you know the the ones that are kind of going to last a little bit longer just to me it would make sense yes okay just it's Ishamayel. he's back yeah know, and- i mean like maybe with arangar don't just you know use the same actor and put him in a lady like in a wig <laughs> <laughs> i guess <laughs> that is a good point <laughs> that, although that i way- kind of now that i've said that i kind of What's that to happen? I don't know. Uh, but um, otherwise, yeah. Especially you know, in Morden's case, don't do it. But. They should do that, but have it be like the quantum leap thing where <laughs> it's like everybody else see, <laughs> sees Halima. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but that when it's from his perspective, he's just a dude in a dress. Right. Like, he, I just wanted to be like Danny DeVito or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Will you dance with me, Matrim Cotton? <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> come yeah. here Gwen. let me give you a scalp massage can i offer you an egg in this trying time that's <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's that's all i had to say about that i mean uh, I just, yeah that's uh, that, it's a good it, it that in that whole scene it is like and there's another scene later and i don't want to talk about it now not as a spoiler because we're already past the spoiler section just because i want to talk about it when we get to the right. boss fight but it is like well, that's confusing. And so, uh, yeah. yeah, we'll get we'll get there. 
thank you guys for joining us. If you like what you hear, please uh, check us out, leave a review. Check out our website, tsmpodcast.com. We are on all the so- so- oh, ooh. Mm. all the socials yeah. <laughs> podcast <laughs> tsm please drop us a line send us a note if you say something nice we'll mention you on the air if you have a question uh we'll be happy to discuss it uh and otherwise kai sharman etherin